All right guys, I'm 36 years old. I've been training for almost 20 years. Christy's got about 20 years of experience under her belt as well. And we're gonna talk about some of the things that we've noticed that change between your 20s and training in your 30s. A lot of that comes down to the amount of time that we have to train in the gym, as well as the things that we do outside of the gym that have a greater and greater impact. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of these points, but first, we've got some really cool stuff coming. We've got an app coming out in a couple of weeks or a few weeks from this video that we're really excited about. But because of that, we're doing a professional photo shoot in about a week. We're great with the fitness stuff, but we've also got some connections to where you're gonna be able to connect your Garmin, your Fitbit, Apple Health, Corona Meter, MyFitnessPal. Keep an eye out for that. So a couple of things that are really gonna make the biggest difference. Chris and I are both in our 30s. We've got a lot of people in our age group that we notice see a lot of kind of similarities. We still do and can train really hard, but a couple of the biggest things that are gonna play an impact are one, the amount of time that we actually have to train. In our 20s, we've got a whole lot more extra time to be spending in the gym. Normally we don't have the kids and the families and maybe as much of a job that we have to worry about. And we can and spend more time in the gym actually training. Once we get into our 30s, we've got families and a lot of other responsibilities that maybe cut down on that training time to where there's maybe only an hour, maybe 90 minutes if we're lucky. So we've gotta be a lot smarter with the time that we are spending training to where we're getting the most out of it. The second large component is gonna be the things that we do outside of the gym. They play more and more of a factor. The cleaner that we're eating, the better that we're sleeping, the more regular that we're getting 10,000 steps a day, those things play more and more of an impact as we're spending less and less time in the gym gym and our bodies don't quite heal or recover exactly the same or as naturally as they do when we're in our 20s. I think like Pat led on to, it's really important to focus on the things that you're doing outside of the gym. We all know how to train hard in the gym. Like that's not the part that we usually we need help with. The thing that we need help with is gonna be taking care of ourselves when it comes to prepping our meals for the week, making sure that we have healthy options readily available in the fridge so that we can fuel ourselves to help with our training sessions. When we're in our 20s, I could go eat a packet of Cheetos and slam down a Diet Coke or a Coke or whatever I was eating and I'd still train great and feel really good. Now if I do that, I bonk, I feel bloated and I feel absolutely terrible. If you're not also not incorporating protein, I don't even think I knew what sources of protein were or I definitely had no idea how much protein I was eating when I was in my 20s and when I started turning 30 and really focusing on trying to build muscle and get stronger, I realized how important those lean sources of protein are and that you have to have them equally throughout the day to help you achieve your goals for the effort that you're putting in, in the gym. So starting with our food is really important. So taking the time to meal prep, taking the time to get to the grocery store and just put good quality things into your body. The other thing is going to be your sleep. So making sure that you are getting seven to eight plus hours of sleep a night. It becomes easier because you feel like maybe you don't have as much free time during the day that you're staying up later to watch Netflix or do all these things or scrolling through Instagram and I feel like sleep as you get older is going to be so key and so crucial to continue helping you reach your goals in the gym because that's when your body recovers and repairs. Today's video is sponsored by Element. Hydration isn't just about drinking water. It's about drinking water and electrolytes. It makes sense because you lose both sodium and water when you sweat. Both water and electrolytes need to be replaced and replenished to help prevent things like muscle cramps, dehydration, headaches, fatigue, and energy dips that can result from low electrolytes and dehydration. Since the 1940s, we've been told to drink eight glasses of water per day, whether we're thirsty or not. Thirst is the way our body regulates blood volume and fluid balance. When you need more fluids, you get thirsty. And when you drink plain water beyond thirst, it dilutes your blood electrolyte levels. And when you drink plain water beyond thirst, it dilutes blood electrolyte volume, especially your sodium levels, which can lead to some nasty consequences. Unfortunately, since low sodium symptoms can mimic dehydration symptoms, people often get confused and tend to drink more water which only exasperates the problem. With 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium, Element has the perfect science-backed formula to help move the needle towards your goals. You're also guaranteed to find a flavor that you love. Element is offering you all, my subscribers, a free sample packet with any order. That's eight single serving packets with any order as long as you use the link below. So make sure you guys click the link below, drinkelement.com forward slash Christy Ermo. That's D-R-I-N-K, lmnt.com forward slash Christy, K-R-I-S-T-I, Aramo, E-R-A-M-O, to get your free sample packet today. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. Now, back to today's video.
All right, so the stuff we're talking about certainly applies as you're moving from maybe your 20s to your 30s or whatever age group you are. But these are all things that the earlier you can apply them to your training, your lifestyle, the more progress you're gonna make. So it's not just about transitioning into whatever age you're going to be, it's about being as efficient to be as effective and get the most out of your training as possible. So even though you can get away with stuff, the younger you are, that doesn't mean that you can't get more out of your training if you're smarter about not just your training, but the things you're doing outside the gym. Just because you're making gains and you don't have to do some of these, some of these things, it doesn't mean that you won't make more gains if you are. And when we start having less time, we start getting affected more and more by the things that we're doing outside the gym than the things we are doing inside the gym. So get, making sure that we're getting enough movement, whether we're working in an office job or we've got kids, whatever those things are, you need to have some sort of metric to be sure that you're getting you know, 10,000 steps a day and you're getting enough movement to be burning enough calories to have a maintenance phase or even more so you know, a progress phase. So as far as training goes, we also wanna be sure that if we have an hour a day that you're being as productive as possible. You're not just wearing yourself out, you're being intentional with what you're doing and you're getting most the most you can out of that hour. If you're taking a class, you wanna be sure that that class is productive. You're not spending half the class warming up and stretching and cooling down. You're actually working for the majority of that hour. That's something that we are very aware of at our gym, that most of the people that come, they've got one hour a day to work out. So we wanna be sure that that hour, we spend as much of that time working out as possible and that we're efficient with the time that we use. So what Christy and I are gonna do right now is we're gonna test an e Mom, a strength EMOM, where we've got some kettlebell swings, which we're gonna be glute focused, which is really kind of how they should be. We almost never go overhead with kettlebell swings. We keep them about waist or chest level, so that it's an actual glute exercise and not just a conditioning piece. If you have the strength to do them properly, getting them overhead is not very challenging. And then we're gonna pair that with some banded Bulgarian split squats. So odd minutes or minute one will be kettlebell swings, minute two will be banded Bulgarian split squats, which will be targeting the post here, and we always try to incorporate single leg work, but it's very productive. 10 minute EMOM. So we're being efficient there, we're testing this out and it will be something that shows up in the gym shortly. EMOMs are awesome. So that was really good volume EMOM. You're gonna get about 75 heavy kettlebell swings and 50 single leg split squats per leg. So that volume when you're training that same muscle group is really gonna add up in a short amount of time. It only takes 10 minutes. So like we were talking about in your 30s, you might have less time. So it's being efficient with that time and EMOMs are one of my favorite ways to do that. It also helps when you're not feeling motivated and you just need something to hold you accountable, the clock is gonna hold you accountable because you know how many reps you wanna be getting in in that minute, and then you're moving on to the next minute. And so I really love EMOMs, not only for getting good volume in in a shorter amount of time, but also to help keep you accountable, especially on the days that you just don't feel like doing it, but you know you should get something in, and you know once you do get that in, you're gonna feel so much better. The other thing that I've really noticed as I've gotten older is intensity. So if I have or a lot of things on my mind or a really stressful day at work or whatever that may be that we all can relate to, sometimes going to the gym and hitting a super intense piece is not gonna be the answer. So what we can do is we can just focus on the quality of our reps, the quality of our movement and have the specific days that we hit the intensity. So instead of hitting six, full throttle workouts that leave you just laying on your back like, oh my gosh, I went as hard as I possibly could. Maybe we choose to do that twice a week. And then we focus on overall volume and specific muscle groups and hypertrophy the rest of the week to where we get a really great pump, we get a really great workout, we burn calories, we feel good, we're getting stronger, but we're not just throttling ourselves into the ground every day, which allows our body to recover as we continue to age. And that is something that I've applied to my training and it has made a world of a difference in how I feel mentally and physically as I continue to get older. So I think something else that's really important, no matter what your age is, or no matter how long you've been training, is identifying what your goals are. Is your goal to lose weight, gain weight, put on muscle, be fitter, or be faster? Normally, most people's goals fall somewhere between those. And no, long, no matter how long you've been training, or no matter what your age group is, that doesn't necessarily dictate how fit, or how strong, or how fast you can be. Uh, we've been training for you know, almost 20 years, and Christy PR'd her 10K this morning. She ran, what did you run it in, 40? 41 minutes averaging under seven minutes uh, a mile, you know, and that was fairly casual after a hard week of training. So you can't, it, it has no, it does not dictate that you can't make progress anymore. You just have to be smarter about your training. And I think for most people, especially as their lives get busier, as you slowly start to get a little bit older, uh, your priorities may change and maybe your total goal is not overall fitness. Your goal is to be fit and your goal is to maybe have more muscle and be leaner, which are smart goals to have. And if those are your goals, the thing to focus on would be muscle hypertrophy. It's gonna move the needle the most because one, you're gonna burn the most calories 
calories when you're also not working out. So you burn calories during your exercise, as your muscles are repairing, you're gonna be burning muscles while you're doing whatever else you're doing during the rest of the day. But on top of that, that's what's gonna help your body change. It's what's gonna help you maintain muscle as you get older. You Even if you get leaner doing more and more cardio, uh, that's also gonna lead to more and more muscle loss as well. So the goal or the focus should be muscle hypertrophy. You should be sore, that's letting you know that you did an effective dose of exercise where your body's going to change. If you're not getting sore, your body's not going to change. But if you're prioritizing a smaller amount of time in the gym, that should be your number one focus for most people. So hopefully this was super helpful. Whether you've been training in your 20s and you're about to turn 30, whether you're now in your 30s, just shift your mindset, shift how you train, and just continue doing something. Something is always better than nothing and just feeling good into your next decade. By the time you guys are watching this video, we are probably at High Rocks. So we are getting prepped and we are ready for that. So we're gonna be dropping you guys our High Rocks video, sharing with you all of our thoughts, what we thought, our times, what the hardest stations were for each of us, how we ran and so on. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Don't forget to smash the like button, drop a comment below with maybe something that you've learned shifting from training in your 20s to your 30s or what your favorite style of training is. We'd love to hear. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.